Hey guys, John here with Performance Plus. Welcome to today's video where I'm going to teach you how to master the drop shot so you really create different options in your tactical play in your singles game. It's going to help you out quite a bit. I'm going to show you the key things that we see the ATP players doing frequently with their drop shot that makes this shot so successful. So first we're going to get into the technical elements of a good drop shot and then we're going to talk about the tactical elements. First of all, you're going to hit a drop shot with underspin. So you've got to have a continental grip and you're going to use that continental grip whether you're playing a backhand underspin drop shot or you're playing a forehand drop shot. You can use the same grip. So it's very important that you get skillful with your continental grip and you get skillful at playing slice backhands because that's really the first skill that's going to enable you to adapt eventually and make the variation in the shot and create more spin, more touch, and get it to become a real drop shot. So in addition to having the continental grip and having the intention to hit a lot of underspin, it's important that we get the swing path right as well. So when I just hit a standard slice backhand, I'm generally gonna bring this racket up higher and I'm going to descend down in the ball and have more of a driving quality on the ball. And my finish is going to be more level with my contact because I'm driving it out in a way. But when I'm playing a drop shot, I don't really want to come up here. I don't want to, I can start up here as this element of disguise, but then I've got to drop the racket and I've got to bring the racket to the ball at almost the level of the ball so I can get those strings to slide underneath and get that ball to rise. It'd be very difficult for me to start up here and get that sort of effect naturally. So we're going to get into how to set up for the slice or for the drop shot in a moment, but it is similar to a slice here but then I'm going to drop the racket and I'm going to have it come through the level to the ball so I can get that ball to rise and get a lot of backspin on it without that, that trajectory, that forward trajectory from a classic typical slice backhand that we would hit. So the combination of the continental grip, wide open face, and a racket path that goes really forward and through the ball and even slightly up at the end is what's going to help that ball rise and get that big heavy underspin on the ball that we want. To play a drop shot, you really have to feel like you carve beneath the ball. And most players make a couple of mistakes on, on drop shots. Either we hit them too flat and they carry through the court and they're retrievable by your opponent, or we try to make them too precise. So if you really carve under the ball and think about lifting the ball up and over the net and getting height, then you're going to get the ball to not travel when it bounces so much and the ball is going to have a steeper descent and it's also going to take the net out of play. That's why oftentimes you'll see drop shots by players, and I've seen Federer, his ball is like 15 feet high but it dives straight down and has a lot of backspin so the ball doesn't have any kind of a forward carrying effect. So the more skillful you get at that of getting your strings under the ball and really opening the strings up and getting the ball to go up the much better drop shots you're going to hit that are not even going to be retrievable by your opponent. The, the best way to really begin to learn this is do what I'm doing right now. I'm just simply dropping balls and getting the feel of getting underneath the ball and lifting it up over the net. And you know, most of the time, especially in the beginning, you're going to play drop shots more effectively with more skill and accuracy off balls that aren't traveling fast. I think one of the things that we see tour players do is hit amazing drop shots of balls that are traveling with them very quickly. Let's not do that. Let's try to get a ball that's slower, that we can actually manage the variation in the speed. So we don't want to receive a ball that has a tremendous amount of power and try to take all that power away. It's pretty hard to do that. So work with a ball that comes in with a moderate speed that you can really slow down and carve those strings underneath. Get that ball to clear the net by three nets high and then take a steep descent down with backspin and the ball won't carry. So there's a feel to it. There's a technique that's really more about the grip and about the angle of the racket and then the intention to get this nice high trajectory over the net in this steep descent into the court. In addition to the speed of the ball, other opportunities that really lend themselves to drop shots are playing a ball that's more medium height. Pretty difficult to play a, a drop shot on a ball that's way up here at the shoulder height. Very difficult to control that. But we're playing most of our shots at medium height through the waist. It's much more natural to hit that shot from the medium height. So look for that ball that has maybe a modest, modest to slow speed that comes in at medium height. And if you're behind the baseline, it's harder to hit a drop shot because you've, you've really got to calculate this length. So you're going to be much more effective if you get this ball and you're up here in the mid-court area. You're going to be able to drop that ball over the net much more effectively and get the feel of that shot if you're more in the mid-court area than back near the baseline. And of course the slice backhand is a variation and part of the family of hitting slice backhands. So if you're skillful at hitting slice backhands, then it's very 
easy for you to disguise the, the drop shot. So I'm going to set up to play a slice. I'm up here. I play the slice through. Next ball that comes in, I set up here, but then I just soften and go underneath and drop it over the net. But from my opponent's perspective, it looks like I'm setting up exactly the same way, but when I go to play the drop shot, I just drop it in and come underneath rather than taking that downward and through path on my regular size backhand. So the key element is also not just the technique, but also the disguise. And you see that so commonly with the, with the ATP players. They're so skillful at disguising when they're gonna hit that drop shot, which makes it more effective. And when it comes to the forehand drop shot, it, we go right back to the central fundamental that I think is so important in tennis, and that is that we get our non-dominant hand involved. And the reason for that is, is that when we make a, a proper unit turn to play a regular ground stroke of forehand, and we do this over and over, unit turn, and we're hitting forehand after forehand, we go here and we go, you know, drop shot, the left hand's gonna help you make a little adjustment here to go to the continental grip, and then from here you can just drop the racket in underneath the ball and hit a drop shot and it, you're disguising it once again. So when you can disguise the move, it takes the pressure off having to make your drop shot so perfect, okay? So the combination of playing that, that, that drop shot up the line versus cross court, where you've got more depth to work with, and the skill of disguise is gonna help you not have to be perfect. Most club players miss the drop shot because we wanna make it so perfect that it's almost impossible to be consistent. Now, oftentimes when we try to hit a touch shot, we fear hitting it too hard, so we stop the racket, and the racket head doesn't travel through the ball. But that doesn't help you feel how to control the ball off your strings. So what I think about is I think about this being a long movement that's kind of like a volley. I've got a continental grip, I've got an open racket face, and I just let those strings slide underneath and then finish through. And that gives it a nice feathery touch. You're not gonna be effective with your drop shot if you try to stop at a certain point in time because it's impossible to measure where that stopping point is to get the depth and control you want. Plus, you won't get as much spin. So it's when you have that nice feathery feel and the racket floats through the ball and carves it and gets that underspin on, that's the feel that you're trying to get on the shot. So continental grip, slightly high to low, underneath it, you can see the racket face is wide open. The intent to get the ball to rise and have a nice touch of underspin, really soft feathery feel to the shot, and that's gonna help you begin to learn how to play an effective forehand drop volley. So next up, I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I've done to help improve my drop shot. And believe it or not, I've done most of that on my own. And for those of you who've watched a lot of my videos, I practice a lot on the court. I took lessons, I learned things, but I really developed those skills, oftentimes being on the court by myself. So have balls with you, set the ball and drop the ball, and just envision yourself playing it, right? Moving over, just touching it over, Moving it over, touching it over, and keep going. And you're gonna miss some, I miss some, of course, but this is the feel you wanna have. And you wanna also make sure that you're applying footwork because nothing's gonna happen without your feet. So get in motion, move up, play the drop shot with a little touch, come back, move over here, play it with a little touch, keep moving, maybe play a little cross court. And that one didn't go over. What mistake did I make? I didn't give the ball any loft. So I need to give that ball loft so that when the ball is passing over the net, if we imagine this is the net, it's descending as it's passing over the net, not traveling horizontally, but descending. So you can learn all these things and improve the feel and touch without having a practice partner. Once you get the feel of how to play the shot, then get someone who will work with you and cooperate with you and you can exchange roles where one is playing and feeding and the other one is receiving and hitting drop shots. And that way you can start to get the feel for how to play it in a live ball situation. And the last piece of the puzzle for hitting an effective drop shot is choosing when to do it. Not only your position in the court, but also the position your opponent is in. As you can see from some of the uh, practice that I've done here with Randy, when he is off the court and he hits a shot and he's not recovered to the control of the court by the time I receive the ball and he's behind the baseline, that's when I can try that drop shot. So if he, hits, if he gets pulled out wide and it's a ball that drops into this area, it takes a lot of pressure off my, my drop shot. I don't have to make it perfect. In fact, I may not even need to have to disguise it because he's just so far off the court. So be selective and make good decisions about when to try the drop shot once you've really learned the technique. And then you'll be on your way to feeling like you've, you've really incorporated that shot effectively into your game. So in this case, I'm gonna take this drop shot down the line, 
try to catch Randy off guard, and then he's going to come running in to get it, and I'm going to sneak in and try to pick off the volley, see if I can, see if I can win the point that way. Here we go. So that was really a common play you see on the tour these days. You don't see pros hit drop shots and stand back. You see pros hit drop shots, recognize that the opponent is going to have to reach and dig, and then they sneak in and pick off the ball that can only rise to clear the net. So that's a great strategy. Very difficult to do, though, if I go cross court. So if I go cross court, if I go cross court with this, even if I make it, I'm so far from the play. I'd have to really run quickly and try to get in position. And if I run quickly up to the ball, I can get played behind me or I can get played down the line. So if you are going to go forward, hit that drop shot down the line. That's a much better tactic, not only for your consistency, but also for your positioning at the net. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Get out there and work on these skills and incorporate the drop shot as an effective element into your tennis game. Please give us a like, subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already, leave your comments down below. I love the comments and I always respond to the comments, the questions and the feedback I get from you. So I really, really appreciate that. And if you haven't done so already, click on the link in the description down below to get access to the library of lessons where you can learn all the fundamental skills you need to learn to master this incredible game of tennis. Thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you in the next lesson.